this is Tim with Mold Medics, and today we're going to be talking about how to get the best possible results out of your DIY radon test kit. So we have this test kit here from First Alert. It's a radon gas test kit that we got at the Big Blue Box store. They're available at pretty much any home center, and they may even be available for free from your state Department of Health or uh, Environmental Protection. Uh, but these are these can be great because they are very inexpensive. Like I said, they could even be free. Uh, so they're going to be a lot less expensive than having a professional test done. Uh, the downside is you got to make sure you're doing them correctly uh, in order to get accurate, usable results. The last thing you want to do is not do the test correctly, get results that you're relying on for the health of your family, uh, and then find out that somehow the test was done wrong and your results are no good. So uh, we're going to cover a couple different things that we as professionals do uh, that make a lot of sense for you to do as a DIYer, make sure that you're getting the best possible results. So the first thing you're going to want to know about is what's called closed building conditions. So these are going to be found, uh, there's typically going to be a list in the instruction manual that comes with your test kit. Make sure you read through this thoroughly and follow up before you start the test. Uh, very, very important. Uh, they may differ slightly from some of these, uh, but it's important that you follow follow the, or the instructions that are in the manual that came with the test kit. Uh, closed building conditions, this is something that needs to be followed for any radon test. Uh, so what closed building conditions are is basically it's the status of the home, making sure that it is closed and sealed uh, and there's not excessive air movement going on in the home uh, with fresh air being brought in and really we want the testing environment or the home to be completely sealed uh, and closed as it would normally uh, in basically the most restrictive of circumstances. So that means uh, first and foremost, all exterior windows have to be closed. This is the biggest one, uh, and exterior doors being kept closed except for momentary entry and exit. So typically during the dead of winter and during the heat of summer, this isn't gonna be much of an issue because you generally don't have uh, doors and windows hanging open for extended period of, periods of time, depending on your climate. Uh, but especially where we are at least, Spring and fall, it's very common that you'll have your windows open or your doors hanging open for uh, long periods of time, and that can really alter the test results that you would get. Uh, so we wanna make sure those are all closed, uh, and this is all maintained for at least 12 hours prior to the start of the test. Again, kind of the longer the better there. Uh, the radon monitor can't be moved at all during the course of the test. So if you're using these, uh, this is one of the charcoal test kits, Using one of these, it's important that you find a place in the home where it's not going to be disturbed uh, and it can stay stationary for the entire duration of the test kit or the test, which uh, depending on the test is going to be a minimum of 48 hours. And this one, I think it lists a maximum of 96 hours. Uh, so you got to make sure it's somewhere that it can stay without being messed with, knocked over by a cat or dog or kids that are playing. Uh, you got to make sure it's able to stay stationary for that entire period. Um, you gotta make sure that any high volume, whole house fans, window fans, uh, fireplaces or wood stoves are not being run during the test period. Uh, all of these can either introduce a suction on the home, which could alter your radon levels, uh, or can introduce additional air from the outside, which can alter your radon levels. Uh, neither way or neither situation is good for an accurate test result that you can rely on. So you want to make sure any of those sources are shut down for the duration of the test, with the exception being uh, if they're your primary heat source. So if it's winter and a uh, wood burning stove, for instance, is the only or is your primary source of heat for the home, you would want to run that as you normally would. Um, you want to minimize the use of dryers, range hoods, bathroom fans, and other mechanical systems. Um, so the fan on your microwave, any of those kind of things, you want to make sure are not being used any more than they absolutely need to, to again, help prevent additional suction or makeup air being introduced in the environment that's going to throw off the test. Uh, you wanna make sure ceiling fans and portable dehumidifiers, portable air filters, uh, window air conditioners, basically anything that is going to uh, blow air on or across or around the, te the test, uh, that those are not being because if you've got a fan blowing right over the test, it's not going to absorb the air correctly uh, and you're going to end up with a skewed result. Um, heating and air conditioning, including permanently installed heat recovery ventilators or HRVs or ERVs, uh, should continue to operate normally. 
So if it's the summer, you'll run your AC like normal. If it's the winter, you'd run your heat like normal. Uh, window air conditioners are a notable exception. Uh, they need to only be operated in the recirculation mode. So basically, you don't want to have them on the setting where they're taking in additional air from the outside because that can begin to alter your test results. Uh, permanently installed radon mitigation systems must operate for at least 24 hours prior to uh, starting the test and for the duration of the test. So if you do have an existing radon mitigation system in place, it's important that that be operating while you're taking the test. Uh, that way you have a good indication of what the test results uh, or what the uh, radon levels are while the system's in operation, which is really what we want to know. Uh, second thing we're going to go over is rules for the placement of these devices. Uh, so this is very, very important to make sure that, again, we're getting accurate results out of these test kits. Uh, so it should always be placed on the lowest level capable of being occupied. Uh, this is almost always going to be the basement if you have a basement. Uh, it could be a living room or a playroom in the basement. Um, it could be a variety of different areas, but you really want it to be on the lowest level occupied uh, or capable of being occupied. Now, if it is for your home and you're the only ones who are living there and you just want to know it for your information, you're not planning on selling anytime soon, um, and let's say you have a basement that maybe has short ceilings and you just go down there to do the laundry or something. Uh, in that case, I would recommend placing it on the lowest level actually lived in. Because if you don't really use the basement, you're not spending a lot of time in there, uh, and it's not really capable of being lived in, uh, it almost doesn't matter. Whereas uh, your main level where you're actually spending a lot of your time, you'd want to take the sample there. You'd still never take it on one of the above floors. You always want it on the lowest level uh, that's either currently lived in or that is suitable for occupancy. You don't want to take it in areas of high humidity uh, or where there are other, in, uh, other items that could impact test results. So kitchens, laundry rooms, bathrooms, uh, any of those areas where uh, humidity is coming into play can begin to alter the test results that you would get from your kit and you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to make sure that the tests are being done in rooms that are regularly occupied so it should be a living room, a family room, then play room, something along those lines where you're actually going to be spending a lot of time. Uh, you wouldn't want to do it, for instance, in a storage room uh, where nobody really is because that, it, whether it, it could be higher than the rest of the home, it could be lower than the rest of the home. Uh, either way, it's not really going to be representative of uh, the levels that you and your family are being exposed to. Uh, you want to make sure it's at least three feet away from doors, windows to the outside, ventilation ducts or anything, or the direct uh, flow of air from a ventilation duct. So anything, again, that could blow air on or across or near your device, uh, you want to make sure it's not in the way of that because that's just going to start to alter your results. Uh, you want to make sure it's at least four inches away from other objects horizontally, horizontally and vertically, uh, vertically above the detector. Uh, so you want to make sure it has space around it that it can gather the air. If you've got uh, your test kit and then you've got something big blocking up against it, that's obviously going to begin to alter the test results because uh, it's going to prevent air from flowing around it like you would normally see. So not something we want. Uh, you want to make sure it's unlikely to be disturbed during the measurement period. We talked about that a little bit before. Uh, you want to make sure it's at least 20 inches off the floor and six feet or 20 inches to six feet off of the floor. Basically, you want to make sure it's going to be in the area that you're actually breathing. So if you put it directly on the ground, that's not going to give you a good indication of what it is in the breathing area. Uh, so on a desk, on a table, a countertop, um, any of those would be good sources or good areas to place it, um, provided the other uh, qualifications are being met here. Uh, you want it at least one foot away from exterior walls. Again, we want to make sure it's getting a good average uh, of the area. Uh, four feet away from heat sources, including fireplaces, furnace, and direct sunlight. A lot of heat and humidity changes can affect these results, so you want it in an area where it's not uh, unduly impacted the, from that. And at least seven feet from sump pits or and three feet from floor drains for, again, the same reasons. You want to make sure there's nothing uh, kind of altering those uh, results. Now, the final, the final uh, recommendation that I would have if you're using one of these for your sampling um, and really give you a good indication of what the radon levels are in your home, is to use two of these at the same time. So whenever, if you have a professional come out to your home and do radon testing and they're using a charcoal test kit, 
uh, by regulation, they're required to use two simultaneously, uh, side by side. And that's to ensure that you're getting an accurate test result. Because if something should be wrong with one of them, uh, or somehow one of them, maybe the, the plastic on this was uh, punctured during shipping or something, and that never got noticed, uh, you could end up with a dramatically incorrect result, uh, and that's not something that you want. So by using two of these at the same time, uh, you're going to make sure that you get the best possible results because they should be very, very close together. Uh, if you do two simultaneously, you send them in for analysis uh, and you get one that's reading two and one that's reading 12, uh, okay, now, now we know that we've got an issue with some of the test kits and that's, that those are not results we should rely on. Uh, but if you only do one, you don't have that additional data point uh, and you could be relying on improper data. So. Uh, very important, again, make sure you read through the instructions very carefully that come with your test kit. Um, one of the biggest things that can be problematic, and I did this myself whenever I got one of these a few years ago, uh, this one specifically says it is 48 to 96 hours, if you can read that in red. Um, that is the only time, or the window that this should be exposed for. Uh, in my case, I set one out and forgot to set a reminder or anything. Uh, and I think it went for like six days or something like that, in which case I just threw it out, didn't send it in for analysis because the results would have been not accurate and unreliable. Uh, so whenever you set it, set a reminder, uh, alarm on your phone, whatever you need to, to make sure that you know you need to pick it up, seal it, uh, and get that sent back as soon as possible. So if you follow all those instructions, you should end up with a reliable test result. Uh, that will help tell you whether your radon levels are uh, below the EPA action level of four, uh, or if there's something that would justify mitigation. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you guys and have a great day.